Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe and do consider supporting the channel via PayPal or Patreon. You'll find the links in the video description. I'm continuing my series on World Championship Blunders. This time it's Alexander Alikin against Max Oewer from their 1937 match. We've already seen uh, a game from their 1935 match, but 1937 was when Alikin struck back and regained the world title. Spoiler. There you go. Um, so this is the 16th game. Alikin was already leading in the match. Uh, this game features an extraordinary double blunder, actually. It's quite curious. So it's a Catalan. Queen A4 check. White does not need to recover the pawn at such an early stage. And in doing so with the Queen, well, it's Black still has a few problems to solve, but basically this isn't the most dangerous way for White to play because Black usually manages to get a hit against the Queen, as we're about to see. So after Queen C4, remember, in, in the Catalan, it's the difference between these two bishops, which is often significant, that bishop on g2 striking across the board. If the bishop on c8 can actually get into the game, then normally black solves all the problems. So after b5, bishop b7, black should be fine now. But still a few little tricks to negotiate here. And one of the problems for black is that you can see the rook <clears throat> gets to the open file very quickly. So the queen has to find a safe spot. Queen c7 looks normal, but then rook c1. And there are still a few issues here. Queen b6 looks like a safe square for the queen. But the problem is that after b4, that bishop can't retreat back this way. So it has to go back to e7. And you can see that white's rooks are the first to get to the open c and d files. And, you know, white generally is quite active here. So, you know, black has to be a little bit careful. Um, if you're playing, if you look at this with a computer, then you would just think, oh, what's the problem for black? But I can tell you, it playing this with the black pieces it is really not simple bishop c6 well it looks like a slightly strange move that when you put the bishop on the same line as the rook just feels a bit clumsy and lo and behold something very nasty is about to happen if black could successfully exchange bishops for example and then put the rooks in the middle, no problem. But here, Alikin strikes with rook takes knight. It's an excellent move. So if queen takes, then knight e5, forks, queen and bishop. If knight takes, then of course queen takes bishop. So bishop takes rook. But now the diagonal is open. And here, well, a typical... Um, Catalan trick, knight g5. Typical that this diagonal opens, but also, you know, there's some kind of combination on h7 as well. Usually it's the, the queen is on this diagonal, um, but, well, it'll do on h4 as well. So black is, is getting set up here uh, badly. Um, well, just one little trick here if bishop c6 of course that can be taken now all white needs to do is eliminate that knight and watch out for this so knight e4 hitting the queen and then knight takes knight and queen takes pawn very simple but absolutely typical of these lines so rook takes knight has just been played bishop takes knight g5 so black can't interpose, so queen b8. And here I'm amazed at Alikin's next move, actually. So he sacrificed the exchange. There are tricks here with the queen and knight. 
this rook in the corner is trapped. It's not running away. But Alikin chose to take the rook. <clears throat> As I said, I'm really surprised at that. He could have just played knight takes h7 here. And this gives white such a pleasant initiative. You know, as I said, there is no particular rush to take the rook in the corner. In fact, sometimes, you know, it could be very useful to have that bishop on g2. At the moment, it's a better piece than that rook in the corner. Instead, Alikin took straight away and then took on h7. But that exchange here kind of frees black's position. I mean, obviously, knight takes knight, queen takes bishop, that's nice for white. And white has won a pawn. But actually, after rook c8, black is very much in the game. Black has excellent compensation for the pawn. Because that pawn is a little bit loose. You can see that square is available for the rook. Could be significant that these squares are weaker on the diagonal. Knight g5 played. Rook c4. Yep. Oiva has counterplate. <clears throat> Knight c e4. Okay, well that, that can't be taken, of course, because there'll be check and mate. But actually, um, black is safe enough. Rook takes rook, check. Bishop takes rook. And queen d5, that is strong centralization from Oiwa. Um, if knight takes knight, then the queen can check, but, well, the king would just be chased into the middle. Actually, the king is completely safe in this position. So Alikin chose to play the knight back to c3, attacking the queen. Now, here is when we have this extraordinary double blunder. So the queen is attacked. Okay, you have to think, where would you move with black in this position? Black to play. What are you going to do? Well, I hope that you wouldn't play queen e5. That is definitely a mistake. Queen c6 is fine. <clears throat> Just maintaining the queen on an active square. Queen c4 is also fine as well. Um, in the end game with two bishops, black has enough counterplay. But queen e5 was played. Okay, white play. What are you going to do? Um, I'm sure. Well, I'm sure you can spot this, even if you haven't seen this before. White to play. Alikin played here. Bishop b2. Not the best move. Queen h8 check should be played. So forking king and queen. And if king g8, knight takes queen. Bishop b4. Now, it has to be said that white is a pawn up, but black certainly has compensation. However, white is able to get one of those bishops. That knight is pretty good in the centre of the board. White is a pawn up. Yes, the queen's time pawn majority will provide some compensation for black. Nevertheless, I think we can say that white has decent winning chances. But Ali can play bishop b2. Was it because he was wanting more from the position? Absolutely not. By the way, if black plays queen f5 here, black is still absolutely fine. But instead, Oiwa played bishop c6. Well, it's great to put the bishop on that diagonal. It must be a bit scary for the king. But incredibly, he's forgotten about queen h8 check again. And this is, in this particular position, simply winning for white. Because now it really is a two-pawn advantage. Because the knight attacks the bishop... The bishop will have to move away, and now that pawn can be protected. White is two pawns up, a winning endgame. But Alikin didn't play it. Incredibly, 
he decided to protect that pawn. A3. <laughs> Remarkable. So basically, neither player had seen that. Oba played bishop d6. Now, I don't know whether he'd seen it by this stage, uh, because now that the queen is protected, of course, this simply doesn't work, uh, because in that case, black is a piece up. But anyway, bishop d6, whether intended or not, prevents queen h8. And the game resumed its normal course, in inverted commas. Uh, e3, queen f5. Well, basically, black has excellent compensation for the pawn. Uh, not enough to win, but... Well, in fact, Alikin had to be a little bit careful, because after these moves... See, that knight comes to a really nice square, looking at some very sensitive points in white's position. And in this endgame, in fact, this move succeeds in winning the pawn back. Uh, because if the king steps up, then knight c4 check. So Alikin had to compromise. So now material is even. However, there are too few pawns on the board. And, well, I, I, can, I can go on. But basically, um, the game drifted towards a draw. White is active enough. You know, normally you'd say the two bishops uh, could give winning chances here, but actually White's minor pieces are decent enough, and Alikin succeeded in holding a draw. I may as well go right to the, as as I've got this far. I'll I'll go right to the very end just to satisfy everyone. Uh, but the game ended in a draw like this. There we go. Draw agreed. Let's just go back to that critical position. So here's where the double blunder came. Queen e5, allowing queen h8. Alikin didn't spot it. Oiwa didn't spot it. Alikin didn't spot it. And then, pff, finally, the chance has gone. Now that is an extraordinary double blunder. It just shows the pressure at the top. You know, when the players are fatigued... Sometimes they miss really elementary tactics, as we saw in the match between Carlsen and Nippon Nishi. Um, whether you know that would would have had a a bearing on the 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 result of the match, if uh, Alikin had uh, spotted that or not, or, or what? It, I I mean, frankly, I don't think it was significant for the match because. By this stage, Alikin was already leading, and indeed he he went on to win the match convincingly. But anyway, in itself, it's kind of fascinating to see. Thanks for watching.